Hey all, James from TDB here bringing you another in between episode. Today I am going to be talking about the uh, Yunnan sourcing uh, Boulong tea, uh, 2019 tea. I have it right here. Um, so in my big slow boat, slow boat order from Yunnan sourcing, uh, ordered a bunch of his rights from 2019. Uh, this one cost 10 cents at the gram at the time. I think it's just very slightly more, a couple bucks more now, uh, for a 250 gram cake, so a small cake, not the smallest. Um, and I've been drinking this tea throughout the morning with my wife going to uh, do another brew right here while this water has been freshly boiled as well. Um, so yeah, I'm probably on like steep five or so. I have some tea here that I was just drinking um, and going to uh, be going on to this. So this is part of sort of a series that I think Scott's done, Scott at least did for 2019, where he's featuring, featuring sort of the individual regions of ripe. There's a Bada tea, a Hukai, uh, a Lao Mani, and um, this tea, of course, the Bulong. And I think I'm forgetting, oh, a Mung Song tea as well. So there's a couple different ripes in this, uh, in, in this series, uh, and I'll be bringing on as many as I can from there. So I think I'll be doing the Hukai next, uh, and just sort of comparing and contrasting. This is probably steep number six right here. Uh, gonna drink five, but first gonna have a quick smell. Fairly basic ripe smell, clean, woody, uh, I don't know. Ripe has a very characteristic smell. This fits pretty square in the middle of that category. Uh, yeah, uh, using about 9.3 grams for a 250 milliliter pot. That's just about how I do it normally. Maybe I'll use slightly less when I'm not filming in an episode, uh, but I think it tastes a little better when you up it just a little bit. Uh, cheers. Woody, creamy. Um, yeah, uh, just a generally very classic flavor. Um, and I've sort of been bouncing between these ripes. Usually what I will typically do is I'll, uh, I'll, I'll just pick a cake, drink through that uh, pretty much every day with my wife. So we'll finish it off and I don't know, a 250 gram cake, we're doing eight or nine grams. So that's about 30 days or so it would take to finish off one of those. So we'll typically do it that way. But these days I've actually been sort of swapping between the two between all of the different ripes, trying to compare them a little bit. Um, and so one thing that's interesting to me about sort of comparing these regions is seeing which ones sort of fall into categories of ripe that I feel like I already know uh, pretty well. And this tea definitely feels like one of the most classic of them. I think the Hukai does as well. Some of them feel like, oh, this is interesting because it's a little different. Um, the Lao Mani, of course, does. Uh, definitely not a classic ripe taste for that tea, um, but something like the Bada and Mung Song, I think also fall into like, you know, it's similar. It's not like we've never heard of Mung Hai County ripe where Mung Song and Bada are from, but uh, how often are they used in sort of single region things? I'm not sure that it happens too often. So you can sort of pick out the individual components. So I'd say it's actually been surprisingly educational in that regard. Uh, this tea, uh, I think, uh, fits just, as I said, squarely into that ripe classic category. Um, yeah, so, uh, cheers. Ah, yes, so this, this steep is a little bit closer to what I re remember of the tea. It's just a very robust, a very stout taste. Uh, there's a little, little bit of bitterness to it. It's not to the level of the Bawang that I brought on recently. Um, and I enjoy this sort of bitterness, not even close to the La Mani, but the, there is a light bitterness to this tea um, that probably indicates that it wasn't like 
super, super uh, heavily fermented. Uh, yeah. But it, it's, it sort of gives it a little bit more um, of an interesting taste to it. Um, just a very classical, robust stout tea. Sort of um, vanilla, woody, not getting a ton of fruit on it on the steep. Good body. Um, easy to drink, yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah, this, this is just a really, really solid tea. Um, and one last observation I'd say is that, generally speaking, I find Scott's teas to be uh, generally at least half a step above dye teas. And, of course, it can vary. Some dye teas I like just as much as Scott's teas, and some Scott's teas I find to be closer to the level of, like, an average dye tea. But I'd say, overall, in general, I find his teas to be a little bit better. Um, and I like both, and I've been drinking through both pretty regularly with my uh, wife for the past... Uh, four years or so. Uh, so yeah, uh, just definitely um, a pretty enjoyable tea. So uh, let me know how you guys like Scott's Ripe Teas, if there are any standouts. Generally, I would just find them to be good, classical, clean, um, good quality teas that are well, uh, well priced. So this tea would be no exception to that. So I'm going to put this tea uh, a little bit above Last Laugh but a little bit below the Bawang, so I'm gonna give it a rating of 6.2. Um, yeah, uh, so hope you all have been staying safe out there and have been drinking lots of tea. Uh, let me know what teas you've been drinking, what ripes you've been enjoying. Um, the weather here in Seattle, I'm filming this at the very end of March, is still quite uh, wet and uh, cold. Well, it's not super cold, but it's like 40s-ish, so it's not, totally warmed up yet, so uh, Ripe has been pretty suiting for just the current mood of things as well as this weather. Uh, so thank you all for tuning in. Hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this episode and hit that subscribe. Gonna con keep on trying to bring on more in between episodes. Expect a lot more Ripe. Um, and let me know what you'd like to see. Um, if there's any sort of episode ideas or something I can do on my own, uh, would really appreciate those suggestions. Uh, I take them very seriously. So thank you all for tuning in, and I will see you all next time.